No, they're not superheroes, but that's just because they couldn't decide on what color to make the costumes. Although they do wear capes. Everywhere. Need an education on how to grow your business? The nice guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. Hey, Funkin' fans. Welcome back. Welcome back. We have a little bonus episode today. My name is Strickland Bonner on the other side of the microphone. Are you... What, bonus. What are you? <laughs> that was like my premiere. That was bonus that was like, music. <laughs> I don't know. What, the what does hell? bonus music sound it's, like? That's what I'm what wondering does... myself. <laughs> I don't know. I was just playing the trumpet. I don't know. Oh, Strick, we have not done the Nice Guys on Business Blues for oh quite some time. Oh my God, we are three <laughs> seconds into the introduction, and you're already off the rails. We have to stay right, a little bit right. focused here. All right. All right. Fine. Fine. We are professionals. We are doing this without a net. <laughs> I don't even know who Annette is, but I dated a girl in college named Annette once. Oh, God. Once. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I got to get that in. God, anyway, so today, bonus episode of whatever music Doug deemed no, it was bonus it. music. Can, are you going to play some bonus? Do you have some bonus music that you can play? Can you come up with a, of all? What is the name of that? Was it audio? <laughs> <laughs> is that bonus music? Oh, uh, shit. We can't, we can't be on. Uh, this is obviously going to be. Um, our Outlawed specific from, uh, intro and outro, like th- the other people that we had on here, we had uh, Caroline Sassone, we had Nicole Holland, we had Lou Diamond on with us. They're going to yeah. have to do their own intros and outros because they're not going to want this one. That's for damn sure. I'm pretty sure that that's that's the way we set it up. The problem, I think, with us sharing that other stuff yeah. is that it, we're too out of control. You think? I mean, that's obvious, right? <laughs> we are out of control. I don't know. It's all it's all relative. It's you know, what is the definition of out of control? <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. I after nearly 500 episodes and nearly a million downloads, you would figure that we would know what control and out of control is. Uh, maybe we do and we just ignore the You know, the thing that we have really been good at is ignoring pretty much every rule that it comes to having a successful podcast. <laughs> We've actually created our own. One thing that has remained constant through the last several years of putting this podcast together though, mm-hmm. The equipment. Oh, that was a segue. (laughs) Uh You like that? You like that? So we. uh, this is a bonus episode of The Nice Guys. This is our podcaster's forum. And in this podcaster's forum, this is the technical stuff. All of the stuff that people need to know if you're going to start a podcast, if you want to start a podcast, thinking about starting a podcast, the equipment, the equipment, the technical stuff, the microphone, the wiring, the app, the wiring. Is that is that even a thing anymore? Are there wires that are part of this? I guess a USB wire is a wire. Well, right? it depends on how you set it up, too. I think some of the people on the podcast in certain situations actually use audio mixers. And, you know, it no. just depends on how you are recording. So that's why there is the Podcasters Forum, so we can give you all the options. It's very cool. So it's what's interesting about it is a number of the things that I have done as a result of um, putting together a podcast is listening to other podcasters, seeing what software, seeing what hardware works for them. For us, a simple USB microphone. We'll get into it into the uh, in the podcasters forum. But the apps, all of the things that you use to record and to edit, and all the post production stuff, and your project manager. Do we even do we talk about? I forget if we do we get into the project management software. Or we really don't even get into. We that, talked we? about it. We talked about Freedcamp briefly on last week's show, one of our episodes. But really, we don't get into the details about it. I, I don't remember if we do in the in the. I don't think we do in this episode, but we do talk about recording software yeah. and the stuff that you need to edit the show and the best practices for uh, for putting a show together from a tech. Technical side. If you want more information about the guesting side, how to be a great guest, listen to the last podcasters forum. I don't even remember what bonus episode that was, but it was a few months ago, mm-hmm. and that was with uh, Lou Diamond, Phil Gerbyshek, uh, Jeff Gibbard, uh, you and me. And this one, totally cool. So check out this lineup: uh, Caroline Tassone, she is from uh, the Shareable Podcast. Nicole Holland, uh, that has uh, a company called Interviews That Convert, amazing, amazing company that does guest management, guest placement uh, for uh, for shows. Got Lou Diamond, who is a client of ours that does uh, the Thrive Loud podcast. And of course, you have our podcast, too. So we are really bringing the uh, the quality level way down when we're, <laughs> we're, right, when, we're, when, we're, when we're here. But those three, they're amazing. And we do a good job of holding it all together. <laughs> Most definitely. Really interesting information. And, and I, if I remember correctly, we really get into some good discussions because we have very different opinions on certain things, not just equipment, but on setups. And uh, there's there's some good stuff in there. 
Yep, yep. So anything before we uh, before we get to the interview? No, I think we, we screwed uh, this it? up plenty good already. <laughs> Why don't we actually get into it and let them actually learn some real information? Thank you, Nice Guy community. Thank you, all of our guest listeners that are now tuning in uh, that have never listened to the Nice Guys on Business podcast before. If you haven't, get it on iTunes, get it on Overcast, get it wherever you get your podcast. But we appreciate you listening, recommending and reviewing the show and sharing it. Uh, with all of your buddies. So um, let's just get to it. The Podcasters Forum, the technical stuff here on the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Hey, this is Doug Sandler and welcome back. This is, uh, what is, is this number two, Strickland? Is it, do you, do you know what number this is? It's number two. I'm not talking number one or number two. That sounds <laughs> a little, a little blue for us, I think. All right. We're already out of control. Well, this is Doug Sandler and this is the podcasters forum where we, uh, we give you the latest insights from podcasters to podcasters or aspiring podcasters. If you ever thought about podcasting, this is a really good spot to be. And today we're going to be talking about a couple things that are near and dear to all of us podcasters' hearts, and that is what equipment and what software and what apps do you need to actually have a successful podcast, or at least to start podcasting. So um, there are five of us total here today, so I'm going to let everybody have a chance to, uh, to introduce yourself and, um, and share a little bit about you, uh, and, then I'll, uh, and then I'll introduce myself finally, and then we'll just get into the topic. So what, Nicole, I, I want to start with you because you're the only one here with purple hair. So why don't you start? <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> um, yeah, I have purple hair and my name's Nicole Holland. I have a couple of podcasts. One is called uh, The Business Building Rockstar Show, and it's been around since March of 2016. And uh, at the beginning of 2017, I launched Get Guest Ready, all about how to be a great podcast guest um, to build your authority and your influence and and deepen relationships. All right, that's cool. And should we should we stay in the uh, in the ladies first mode and and have Caroline? Caroline, you want to chime in here? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Caroline Sohn. I'm the producer and co-host of two podcasts. The first is Shareable, a podcast about the impact of people and technology on our lives and careers. And the second is the True Voice Media podcast, which is a roundtable discussion about what's current in social media. Wow. Wow. Awesome. And, and, and I'm feeling a little inferior because I only have one podcast. I was thinking the same thing, Doug. Like, how do you women do two podcasts? It's crazy. Because, I am so not worthy. You know why, Strick? Because women are so much better at multitasking than us guys. So That's just true. introduce yourself and we'll get, on, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get on the loo and take it from there. So my name is Strickland Bonner and I am Doug's uh, co-host on the podcast of the Nice Guys on Business that we do five days a week. I still don't know why. And um, yeah, we were up to almost a million downloads. Like, I don't want to brag, but like, this is the brag portion, right? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Brag. Okay. Okay. So we're up to like 460 some episodes, almost a million downloads, which is very exciting. And um, we're still really not worthy with these amazing women that we're talking to. It is amazing. And and, and speaking of women, we have Lou, <laughs> Lou Diamond here. Oh, as oh yeah. And then there's Lou, the women, <laughs> and then there's Lou. Yeah. Sorry, Lou. Sorry. No, no, no worries. My name is Lou Diamond. I host uh, Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, where we work with the most amazing people and connect everyone to them, I think. I'm not really sure what we do. But what I do know is that uh, I only have one podcast, and I'm very proud of it. And I look forward to sharing all of the knowledge that we have on this lovely group, uh, specifically to make fun of Doug at any point in time. <laughs> well, okay. has permission. All right. All right. Well, that's uh, well said, Lou. And my name is Doug Sandler. I am the host of the Nice Guys on Business podcast, along with that guy over there, Strickland Bonner. And without Strickland, uh, our production would be total garbage. So thank you, Strickland, for for being able to participate there. Uh, we also own a company called Turnkey Podcast Production, and we do uh, concept to launch. And then post-launch, we do uh, podcast production and editing for uh, for those that are that are in the podcasting space. So, I, you know, one of the things that I get asked over and over and over again from people that are getting into podcasting or maybe are in podcasting for a short amount of time are what are some of the tricks and some of the equipment and some of the apps and some of the software. So I thought, what a better, what better a time for us to come up with another podcasters forum? If you missed the last one, I think it was out in July that we, that we did. But if you just wait 10 minutes, it'll be tweeted. <laughs> Not anymore. Now that you've cut back on the uh, I did. I, I cut back the promo on that a little bit. But uh, you could probably just go to Twitter. And Did we hashtag it anything? I don't even know. I guess you could just go to DougSandler.com. And, and you've been posting it twice a day for two months. You don't know if it's hashtag? Come on, I, Doug. I, I don't think it, it is hashtag. But just go to DougSandler.com and in the little search box, just type in 
forum, a couple of things are going to come up. One would be the penthouse forum. <laughs> I was supposed to have one there. And the second, if we were on Zencaster, I would have my drum roll, my, my rim shot, but I don't have it. So. Very true. Very true. All right. So let's get into it. So uh, podcasting equipment. Can we start with some easy stuff? I mean, this is probably one of the, one of the areas that most people are always like, I have no idea what I even need to use. So who wants to chime in first? What kind of equipment are you using to podcast? Was it an easy thing to, to put together and, and give, us, give us some view? I can uh, chime in here. It's Nicole. And what I love is that we are, I think, all of us using different stuff today in terms of our mics. Um, I started out with the Yeti, which I know you love, Doug, and I love my Blue Yeti. I have the Blackout Edition. Uh, but for podcasting, what I found was when I got started, it just picks up too much background. And where I live, there's construction going on and all that. So I wound up switching to the ATR 2100. And uh, it's been serving me well. Nice. How about you, Lou? You, Lou, you use the Yeti, don't you? I, I use the Yeti, but I was also going to give um, some advice because I've been doing a lot of podcasts remotely where obviously my Yeti is kind of stuck in my studio because it's a very large microphone and, and I'm very happy with it. And it's very uh, it's malleable within the room here and we have a good arm and band, which we could talk about. But I have... Um, I have two remote mics that I use. I use this um, Fifin technology, which is great for it's a, it plugs directly into your, com- your computer. So you have a USB connection if you need to be remote and be on your computer. And I also have two um, handheld mics that um, go into the Tascam remote, uh, the backup recorder, which I'll use, which have a, uh, what's the connection uh, that it's it just uses? An X, just XLR. XLR. It's an XLR connection like it would be for a guitar or anything like that. So multiple microphones, very happy with the Blue Yeti. And the portable mics have been great because uh, they have built-in screens on them as well. Hey, Strick, don't we have, um, we just started a couple of clients with uh, that Shure microphone, and that seems to be a good one as well. It's, I, I forget the, the number. Do you know the, you remember the number on that one? Oh, shoot. Now you're going to call me out on it. Uh, SM51, <laughs> well, right. I think. I'll have to look it up. But, Nicole, you make a really interesting point because I use the Yeti Blue as well, and I love the sound of it. But, wow, it is really sensitive, and it picks up a lot of noise. And that is a really an excellent, like, pro tip right there. Like if you are going to be recording your podcast somewhere where it's really quiet, you know, you're okay. Yeah. The Yeti blue may be a great choice, but if there's any noise, like if you don't have a glass enclosed studio that is silent, you know, maybe it's not the best choice because you're right. It's extremely sensitive. And let me give you a tip on that because prior to, so they're actually building like a full on development behind my place. So jackhammers and stuff like this, there's nothing I can do about it. However, um, when I started podcasting, and just to get the sound better on the Blue Yeti, I actually built a studio box. And you can do that really simply. You can either buy one for like a couple hundred bucks on Amazon, or you can go to you know any Walmart or Home Depot or whatever and get a big plastic storage bin and then inside put foam. Literally, it sounds like you're in a studio and it's like 20 bucks. I love it. I can only imagine. That's probably a really cool fix. But you feel kind of claustrophobic, aren't you, just talking into the box or is it it have an open end on the other side? No, it it does. It is, you know, a full box. However, um, you can get a really big one. Like mine's really big. And so I would just stick the Yeti in it and it, 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 the sound is amazing when you put your when you put your face right into it. And what I like too is that, as somebody who like you th- sees squirrels sometimes and Squirrel. gets distracted, <laughs> <Squirrel>. <laughs> it's like when I would be doing an interview and and there was no camera involved, right? Like I'd be in it, and this it was just I don't know. It's it felt good. It sounded good. And you, again, get a really big bin, and you have plenty yeah. of space. And how about you, Caroline? What do you guys use for, uh, well, for shareable? I was going to say, um, Je- for those of you who know my co-host Jeff Gibbard on the Shareable and also the True Voice Media Podcast, we used to use the Blue Yeti with that foam box. And anybody who knows Jeff, trying to keep him focused into just talking into this tiny little box for an hour <laughs> is a task in itself. Right. Um, but right now we're using the EVRE320. We have two of those set up in a, an actual studio that we had the ability to build in our office. So that's what we're working with right now. The Shure microphone that we made reference to just a moment ago is the uh, Shure MV51 Digital and a uh, really easy tabletop microphone. And uh, we use it with a couple, with a specific client in mind that we have that, w- that does a lot of interviews on the go. So she's got the, the microphone, her laptop, um, the, uh, the, the cables and backup recorder all in, all in this one little waterproof box. 
So, uh, and actually strict, maybe what we can do is put in the show notes, the, you know, the, the whole package that we have for them. Cause it oh, is absolutely. A, a really, really cool package. And, and the other nice thing that we use, uh, and I think strict, you use this too, is I don't know how to, if it's road or roadie, but we have a, a, a road swing arm so yep. that you can actually put a shock mount and, uh, and the microphone right on it. And then uh, have a little splitter coming out of the bottom of the Yeti microphone, which is what we use. And one part of it goes to the headphones and the other part goes to our backup recorder. So, because we know what happens in the world of, uh, of digital technology. Things don't always work the way you want them to all the time. For example, we had a little bit of issue with the software that we were using. So I, have I knew you were going to call me out. <laughs> well, no, for, for, <laughs> anyone, for anyone that is just getting into podcasting, too, I want to clarify that these microphones, you know, they don't have to be expensive. The MV51 um, that, that Doug just mentioned, I believe, is around $200. And there's yeah, some that are in the three to $400 range. But the one that Nicole is using, the Audio Technica, um, you know, it's like sixty five dollars, and it sounds great. Hey, so, so you don't have to spend four or five hundred dollars on a microphone to get something to sound good. Lou, since you're probably one of the newer ones in the podcasting space, you're on episode. What episode number are you on for your? I think we're on. Well, as we're the recording of this, we're at twenty five. But I've probably done now fifty interviews. So what's great about that is you're actually over the over the barrier now. You know, most people quit podcasting around episode ten. I think it is. So you're you're over the you're over the barrier. So when you first got started, Lou, was the whole equipment idea? What did it just seem overwhelming to you? I, I remember what it was like for us. I, I'm just curious what it was like for you. So I remembered the day that the Amazon <laughs> guy came to the door and delivered all of my podcasting equipment. And it was Christmas in May. Uh, <laughs> it was no, I'm bad, for, I'm bad for a Jewish guy. <laughs> no, no, I know. Exactly. Um, well, on the podcast, you know, we're agnostic. So anyway, this is important to know that when um, all of it came in and understanding how you could put it all together, I, I used to think I was technically savvy and I recognized there were certain things I didn't know. Uh, however, what's really funny is how quickly and easy it is to install everything, how, it, how easy it is to um, get comfortable with it, use it. And obviously, even the language we were just speaking before about all the different types of microphones or model numbers, you know, th- th- that kind of like we, we're filling a little bit of the audio geek in us. Uh, what I will say is, yes, there was an overwhelming feeling initially. However, there is a level of comfort and what I will tell any future podcaster out there that while it might be overwhelming initially, it's really cool and very simple once you get going. How about for you, Nicole, when you first got started, because I think you're probably senior in the podcasting space to all of us. When you first got started. Never say a woman senior, Doug. (laughs) (laughs) Not not at all. Not at all by age. She's definitely, I I think I'm the old, the old man on campus. You are. I'm number two, probably. Nicole has more experience. (laughs) But you know what? When I started, I had never listened to podcasts. I didn't I didn't have an eye anything. Like I it was like so far from what I had any awareness of. It was extremely overwhelming. Now prior to podcasting, I had already launched my first summit. So I was already using the Yeti. I was doing video interviews. Um I wouldn't say I was like extremely comfortable, but I had a bit of experience under my belt. When I went into podcasting and like the community I joined and the training and everything, people were talking all this jargon and I'm like, what? I was so overwhelmed, so overwhelmed. And um, yeah, I did find that I, I got comfortable pretty quickly, but, and, and this might be a little bit early to mention, but, and if it is just stop me, Doug. Um, when I first started, just the jargon and everything was so scary to me. I didn't know what audacity, I didn't know what anything was. I didn't know how to edit. And so I hired somebody not knowing what I didn't know. And I had a not great experience with that. Um, I found out they weren't doing things up to par. And I thought, you know what? I'm paying so much money for this and I still have to listen and fix it. So screw that. If I have to figure out how to fix it, I'm just going to learn how to do it. And I would say that it probably took me about eight to 10 hours of learning to get to a, a, a basic level of understanding of editing. And I started editing my own stuff. So it's not something that's, it sounds overwhelming. It sounds scary at first, at least it did to me. But you can, if somebody's thinking about starting a podcast and they're committed to doing it, it, it's not rocket science. 
So, and, and Caroline, you actually started in the support arena before you got into the actual hosting. So, so you kind of got a behind the scenes look at what a podcast, what it takes to put together a podcast before you actually got on the air. And, and I know you're a fan, of, of, <laughs> a big fan of podcasts a also fan. as a listener. <laughs> So why don't you share a little bit of your experience with that, with the quick um, getting started? Yeah, I think I think I'm actually probably going to be the the closest to your your beginner's audio surrogate in this podcast because I've only been podcasting for probably less than a year. We started officially in February, where I was in a full support role as the producer of Shareable, um, and, and only as a co-host in about three months in, into that. So. Um, my experience as a beginner it was, well, fortunately, I was in the position where I had Jeff Gibbard, who had been podcasting since 2012, to kind of guide me through the process of how to upload a podcast to a host service, how to go through and then use all of the different materials you needed to edit it. Um, and that's sort of what guided me through the transition to a full support role myself. But I think without the help of him and also the internet, um, I would have been lost and completely overwhelmed. So, Strick, you take you've taken a uh, a role as the audio engineer and and uh, and guru on you know, on the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Um, t- just talk about a little bit about some of the some of the stuff that you use on a regular basis um, outside of just the microphone, your computer, and a backup recorder and the cables. Like, wh- what else is there in podcasting? Because somebody's going to say, "Well, what else is there? What do I have to do?" Well, you know, I've seen a lot of different podcasters that give advice and they're like, okay, you got to go out and buy all these microphones and you got to buy a mixer and then you got to buy like uh, a converter to convert from analog to digital. And look for me, and by the way, I've got a history of audio. I mean, I've got 30 years of audio experience doing everything. And this is really the first that I've ever done digital, right? Where you take a microphone, you plug it into the computer. There's no mixer or anything. So I come from the world of using a mixer and I'm telling you, for 95% of podcasting, especially if you do interviews over the phone or, or you know, remotely, you don't need a mixer and it doesn't have to be complicated. Really, I think there are a lot of guys out there that are trying to make it way more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, you, you started to talk about a, a very valuable point and that was the point is, uh, how do you make the connection? So all of us have uh, interview-based shows. Does anybody do, anybody here at all do like a monologue-based show where, you, where you, it's just you? Ever? Yeah, wait, guess. wait a minute. I'm going to say this again. You guys yeah. have an interview? <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of which, we, I, guess, I guess our Tuesday and Thursday show, Strick, I guess that really is a non-interview based show, but we still have to make the connection because Strick and I, although we do the, the show together as co-hosts, um, we're 40 miles apart from each other. And, and I, I think that most of our audience doesn't even realize that because we do have such a, a close connection. But if we do have to communicate with, their inter- with interviews uh, that we're doing remotely, uh, what software is everybody using? I know we had a little issue just making the connection with all five of us. So, uh, Nicole, why don't we come back to you? Because you were the you were the resolution to the problem <laughs> we were having tonight. Yeah, and I actually do. Um, I do get guest ready as a solo show, and so I'll just mention that um, about the the stuff that I use for that. So I, I've got Hindenburg journalist and I've got audacity and just because I started on audacity it's easier for me to use than Hindenburg but I believe Hindenburg's probably a lot better I just and haven't Cole, learned it yeah not to interrupt but I'm gonna interrupt I just got Hindenburg from the podcast movement that we both attended uh, what, yeah. a month ago month and a half ago yeah. it's taken a while to get used to it because it is very different from audacity but I absolutely love it now that I'm getting comfortable with it yeah. I really really like it you should stick with it that is what I've heard. And um, I would like to, I just don't have the bandwidth to learn it right now. But that's what, I mean, again, we're going to, if you're starting out and money's an issue, the beautiful thing with Audacity is it's free. And I guess if you have Macs and stuff, then you've got GarageBand, it's free. Hindenburg is um, is at a cost, but it's reasonable. And from everything I hear, it's it's amazing. Um so chat yeah. about chat about the making the connection because I think that yeah. oftentimes people are like, well, how do you what do you do? How do you connect with a guest? Yeah. So what we're doing right now and what I do for all of my interviews, whether they are video for my summits, whether they are uh, specifically for the podcast, just audio for everything, I use Zoom and that's zoom.us. Um, it's not .com. And you get this essentially, you get like a virtual office space, and you can either make links for each individual um, each individual guest that you have. You can make unique links. You can actually 
you know, I'm a huge fan of uh, Acuity and um, it actually communicates, Zoom and Acuity communicate. So we'll get into that later, but it is, Acuity will actually create individual links for your guests if you if you do it that way. I what I know, do, I did not know that. That's a, oh you know, yeah. A, I'm glad I've, I'm glad we're hosting. We're doing this show. I just you learned. know I am like the the Acuity and Zoom ninja. So <laughs> you, you gave me you gave me Acuity scheduling program. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But yeah, but, that's very cool. Just one more thing I want to say is what you guys noticed um, when we switched over from ZenCaster, which is also another awesome. Um, a platform which you guys can talk about as well but when we switched over all i had to do is give you guys a pretty link so i'm gonna use lingo pretty link mm-hmm. um which is a masked link that i created um with my one meeting room so what's beautiful with zoom if you like simplicity like me and automation um i made my personal zoom room my phone number Right. And so now all I have to do is anytime I want to have a guest on, I just give them the same link. And then what you can do is actually lock the meeting room. So right now we're all in here. The meeting room is locked. So if anybody. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. How do you stop other people from from interrupting your room if they have the link from a previous uh, interview? Exactly. And all my. (laughs) <laughs> yep. My clients all have it. Everybody who I deal with, this is literally like even for my team members, I create an office room for each of them. So when I need to go talk to them, I just go into their office. So it's just, I don't know, it, it goes to that bigger level. It's not just about the podcasting, but I love, love, love Zoom. So yeah, you can just um, lock it, lock the, lock the door. Good to know. So uh, Lou, and, and I know Strickland because you're, you're on the same show that I'm on. So we use Zencaster primarily. So what are some of the benefits to using Zencaster as your, uh, as your program? And that's Z-E-N-C-A-S-T-R.com. The best part about Zencaster is that it will record the interview, in this case, um, and then it'll send it back up to the host. And by doing it that way, if there are these interference question, um, issues like we just experienced right then and there, uh, it will, you won't catch it because it's actually going to record it locally. And when you put it all together, it sounds great. There's also the great issue about Zencaster that if something does go wrong, it records it locally on that person's machine or on their browser. And if maybe you get disconnected, you can retrieve it at a different time. So I found from a backup perspective, Zencaster is excellent. Although some of the challenges have been, as we've recognized here, when you have multiple uh, people speaking on the show, it can get clogged and crowded like we've had here. I've had issues with what we experienced earlier before, before we moved to Zoom. So I'm going to start using Zoom as a backup, by the way. And also I'll mention, not that you want this many people, but with the free plan on Zoom, like you don't have to pay, right? It's free. You can have up to 100 people. Wow. in the room with you. And yeah, and like you can manage that. You can only have with Zoom, the the free only lets you do up to 40 minutes. So if you want to do an interview-based show with multiple people, you only can do up to 40 minutes. But if you're only doing one-on-one, you can do an unlimited um, number of hours on Zoom. Hey, Strick, cool. talk, talk a little bit about what happens beyond the uh, beyond the the connection. Where does it go from there? You know, how do I now retrieve this? What do I do with it now that I have it? Because uh, we got the equipment, we've got an interview done, and now we're just trying to work out what happens next. So it all depends on exactly how you actually capture the interview. If you do it on Zencaster, it actually will download to your Dropbox automatically and in separate tracks, which is really handy. And if something gets hung up, you can go log into your Zencaster and get it. I'm very curious about Zoom and Nicole knows obviously a lot more about this, but um, it sounds like Zoom is a really great option too, because we have had some technical, I wouldn't say technical difficulties, but you could say technical difficulties. I say we had some challenges with people who are maybe not as technically adept where Zencaster can be a little more challenging. So I'm dying to find out more about Zoom, but there's so many options out there. And Skype, by the way, if anybody disagrees with me, please jump in. Skype is just not a good one because the bandwidth is just not good. There's always a hiccup. There's always, if you're trying to get more than two people on, you're absolutely going to get a hiccup. We have something called Skype skipping. I mean, it's actually got a name because it happens so often has anybody had good experiences with Skype? I was no. just going to jump in there and say <laughs> that that we've actually been using Skype primarily for all of our interviews, but we're not recording with more than two people. And when we did, there were there were a couple little blips in the audio where it would cut out when uh, when one party was talking over the other. So 
Uh, but we have we've had a pretty good experience with it. Uh, no problems yet. <laughs> I, I think you know one of the one of the benefits, and I can I'll come to to Skype's rescue to a certain degree because before we had Zencaster, and it sounds like Zoom is going to be another option for us. Um, I, I couldn't figure out did uh, did Skype have the ability to actually separate tracks and split tracks out, and they they do, and so it made it it made it kind of nice. I mean, it was a it, it's a really good backup program for me. I don't use it primarily anymore. I use the um, Zencaster. But uh, but Skype has been re- for me. I haven't had really any issues. I conduct most of the interviews using it, so um, I'll defend Skype to a certain degree and say I have not had issues unless I have either video content that I'm trying to that I'm trying to record, um, or if I have more than more than two people online. So I'm going to butt in about Skype just because I want to get up on my on my platform here. Um, most podcasters that I come across, and I have a booking service. So I actually, either I or my clients are on a lot of different Mm -hmm. um, shows. And most people that I deal with do use Skype. And I would say at least half of the times I've ever been a guest, I've guested over 100 times on podcasts myself. And at least half the times that I'm on uh, Skype calls, there's an issue. There's a Mm -hmm. connection issue. There's something. So I find people either love Skype or hate Skype generally, but it is inconsistent. And the the thing is when you're dealing with, if you're just doing yourself and a co-host, for example, or you're just doing it yourself and, and you like Skype, then that's awesome. But if you're dealing with multiple different people, especially non-tech savvy guests, you may want to consider something just that's, everybody knows what Skype is, but it can be, it can be wonky. So Caroline, let me ask you a second. I want to come out of the, I want to come out of the recording. So we have, uh, we have Zencaster, we have Skype, we have Zoom, and I'm sure there's some other options as well that, uh, that are out there. But Caroline, oftentimes, you know, we hear that um, that hosts may have a, a challenging time, as Nicole was just uh, alluding to, uh, with guests just sounding good or sounding right. What what do you do to make sure that your guests sound good? Because you deal a lot with remote. You know, not everyone comes to your studio in in Philadelphia. So how do you deal with a guest that's that's um, might not be sounding perfect, or how do you make sure they sound perfect? Yeah, we're almost um, we almost do. 100% of our interviews remotely, uh, other than the occasional, occasional guest who's in town. Um, but usually we send out an email in advance asking our guests to be in a quiet space, use headphones, a microphone if possible. And then we also have our Skype, You can, like you, you said, you can separate it into separate tracks, but we have it set up to a call recorder, which will record their audio as a separate track from ours. So we can, of course, go in and adjust it and post if we need to. Um, but that email initially prepping them for uh, being prepared in the first place is probably our best starting point. Um, once you get into having connectivity issues in the actual call, then it's a juggling between whether or not we can do the call on Skype or move to, we've tried FaceTime before, which we've not found success with, but I'm, that's why I'm super interested in listening to you guys talk about it because I might move us to Zoom after this call. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It seems like Zoom is a is a potentially a good solution, Lou. Th- I guess one of the overwhelming, uh, you know, spots that most people have when they start to get into the podcasting world and and everything is new at that point. Can you do this a hundred percent on your own, or do you feel like you need to have options? Or what are some of the options that you should look at if you don't feel like you can do it on your own? It sounded like an opportunity to plug something. Uh, <laughs> well, you don't, certainly don't feel. I, I'm, I didn't want to obligate you to, to, to uh, promote okay. us. I just the idea of. I know that you examined some options, so I just wanted to hear your. your yeah, I, th- I think it's really important. Like everybody has their their own schedule um, and and very busy lives. And and I have a um, consulting and coaching practice, which does take up a lot of my time. And obviously, there's the podcast as well. So with. With Thrive Loud, um, I actually utilize the Turnkey Podcast guys to help do the editing component of it. And I do handle a lot of the other components to it. Obviously, uh, getting, getting the show up on the web and, and you know, putting it up into Libsyn and putting it all to different places and dealing with the social media component. So the actual production and, and the real making the quality of the show sound good. There's a gentleman on the phone who probably gets a, a little bit of pat on the back, and that would be Strickland. I have no because, idea what you're talking about. Because the, the, the poor bastard has to deal with uh, some of the quality <laughs> that we've discussed um, of problems that you, know, you could have from recording issues to, to transmission issues. Uh, sometimes people forget to 
you know, put the microphone, the headphones on when they're speaking. So there's tremendous amount of feedback. There's lots of that. Um, we've just started to get so volume heavy though, that I even, I have interns though that are helping to edit and, and picking the stuff up. So here's the thing. It's not that difficult to do. It's actually fairly easy to do. It's just a matter of whatever your time is. So if you have the opportunity to use someone that this is their job and this is what they do, go that route uh, because they're going to do it great and make sure you set the expectations for what you need specifically as it comes to the production of the show itself. And, and, and let's talk about just some of the day-to-day stuff that you have to deal with. Guest management, scheduling, uh, posting. You mentioned that to your website as well. Um, Nicole, why don't we talk to you for a second about it? Is that something that you're able to do? I know you're the queen of acuity. <laughs> you referred that to everybody that you can come in contact with. So why don't you share a little bit about how that works in your life? Yeah. I mean, I use acuity scheduling for myself, for my guests, for my clients. Um, that helps me automate the whole process of getting people ready. Um, like Caroline mentioned, sending out that automated email, letting them know, you know, here's what you need to do to prepare. Um, but then in terms of posting and everything after, I do love, I do love my tools. So um, Edgar is what I use to put things on Twitter. Um, I use Grum for Instagram, um, Facebook. I don't do automation except for through Lipson. So I use Lipson for hosting my, um, my show and they've got some great automation there where you can actually put your, um, put, put text to go with your episodes and they'll push it out automatically. So from a guest management perspective, um, is Acuity the only thing that you, that you're involved with to automate the scheduling process? So in other words, what you're doing is you're sending a link to people that potentially could be on your show and they're filling out the, the date and the time that they can do it. And there, is there any type of Q and A that they're filling out or how do you prepare? Got it. You know, Got okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, my process is that if, so I don't need guests and this is what I try and teach like people who want to be guests, like as podcasters, there are less of us and certainly less quality podcasters than there are people who want to be guests. And so none of us really need guests. So um, we want great guests. And so on my website, I have a link and it says be a guest. And so if people go there, there's a form for them to fill out. I tell them what I want from them and they can basically apply. Then we go through those um, when there are openings, we go through and check all the, the people who applied out and I make a decision to see who would be a good fit. Then we send them an invitation saying, hey, thanks for thanks for applying and we'd love to have you on the show here is a scheduling link. And so that is linking to Acuity. And then I, yeah, they just, they schedule, they give me the information I ask for in Acuity. They sign their, um, they digitally sign a media release. They get all of the details and then they show up to my Zoom. So it's really nice because that is all all automated. Post the, after the interview, um, I do a click to tweet that I send to them. I send them a thank you email for being on the show. And um, yeah, and I, oh, and then I use Boomerang to schedule the day of email that goes out to them. Yeah, it's so amazing. I I look through the guests that have been on your show and the guests that you place on other people's shows and I watch your, your Twitter feed and it's just amazing that, you know, it seems like you have an army of people that work for you because it appears that way on social media and, and it's, it's great. I mean, you, you do run a small operation, but at the same time, it's big in its presence and its impact because you don't need to have a huge organization in order to, to have great exposure online and social media and to promote the show because isn't that really what it's all about? It's not just the show coming out and it's going to be aired. It's, it's all of the promotion that you do for your, for your show too, right? Yes. And I have to say that it's, it's systems, right? So it didn't just happen overnight, but, and and I can, I can get down the entire process, let's say in probably other than doing the actual interview, the entire process outside of the interview, probably, and, and, you know, post-production and editing and all that. Mm -hmm. Um, but the entire process probably takes about 15 minutes now from wow. beginning to end. And I know people who spend a lot of money on human resources that they don't, they're not effective. And so I've gotten it to a point where I've created automation and I'm using the robots to, to do things so that my human resources can focus on things that are more important and that, you know, we can't have automation do. 
Caroline, what, what's it like from a preparation perspective before you have a guest come on the show? Not just equipment, but just the process. Is the process a simple process for you guys? Because you have to coordinate not just your schedule, but you're coordinating Jeff's schedule and the guest <laughs> schedule and your schedule all at the same time. So what's the process look like? Um, right now, that's see, I'm the other resource that Nicole's talking about, the, the human resource. Uh, that's me. That's me. Uh, so Jeff usually will send me uh, like any of the leads or emails that have come through his inbox for about Shareable. Usually they're introductions made by our, our dear friend Doug to awesome people we should have on our show. And they get sent over to me and then it's my job to reach out to them. It's like a priority that I have weekly to go out and actually look through everybody's profile and introduction paragraph about you know who they are and what they do and figure out whether or not they're a good fit for our show. This is actually something I spent time doing mm-hmm. yesterday. And um, I went through those profiles and reached out to those people and, and sent them some of the like canned email responses that I actually have saved in Google where you can go in and save those canned emails. And um, that invites them to show, tells them what we're about, what we're expecting from them. Uh, and then we wait to hear back from them. And then again, that goes to me to make sure that they get scheduled. They, we're actually using Calendly. That's mm-hmm. our scheduling link. And um, we'll send that over to them. They can go in, pick their time and date. And that's been the most efficient. But I'm, I'm over here taking notes from Nicole, uh, figuring out how I can automate more of my we'll process. <laughs> we will. We need to. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. Nicole made a comment about, you know, there are more of you as in guests that want to be on podcasts than there are of us. And made me think about what really a networking uh, community that we have. Because really, as soon as you get the ball rolling a little bit with a podcast, there are people, tons and tons of people that are going to want to be on your show, which again, made me think I'm on the iTunes link right now for Shareable, which is Caroline and, and Jeff Gibbard's um, uh, podcast. And as I scroll down to the bottom, it says listeners also subscribe to. And what's very funny is the number two is Nice Guys on Business podcast, which is our podcast, mine and Doug. <laughs> and the fifth one is Online Marketing Made Easy, which is Amy Porterfields, which is a woman that Lou just interviewed last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a really, it's a really tight community. Hey, Strick, because you have got to be the, the, probably the, the, the one-armed paper hanger in this particular case, the busiest man in podcast uh, uh, bill that there, that there could possibly be. You, you, um, you process and edit and produce at many many, probably dozens of podcast episodes every week. So talk about the importance of systems in your process once that microphone is is shut down and and now you take over through the post-production stuff. Talk about that for a moment. It's funny that you mentioned that because I'm actually editing five podcasts right now <laughs> as we do this in between talking. No, that's not what I'm <laughs> um, it, you really do need to get systems. And just to give a little background, Doug and I produce, I I still don't know why, five episodes a week (laughs) we are doing this, right? And so I'm doing the editing for all of them, and it really is crazy. And I have found a couple of systems. Um, Again, when I'm doing a lot of them, it's you got to kind of do the same thing over and over again and and come up with a system. One of the things I love, and Nicole, you might want to, this might encourage you to dig into Hindenburg a little bit more. One of the great things with Hindenburg is they have a button called um, publish. And the publish button can actually publish to Libsyn automatically for you. It's very, very cool. Now, you still need to do your own show notes and that type of thing. But I have set up buttons. A um, little background, again, Doug and I do, uh, we were on Turnkey Podcast. And so we've got, I don't even know how many clients. We have six, seven, eight clients right now starting out as we're rolling that we produce the podcast for. So it's a lot of different styles and, and, and a lot of different editings that I'm in, in charge of getting all the editing done. But in Hindenburg, I have about eight different publishing buttons set up. And so one of the things that I've done to automate through the Hindenburg software is there's a button that says nice guys on business to Libsyn and nice guys on business to my hard drive. So when I'm done editing the episode, I press both of those and it automatically uploads a draft to Hindenburg and it saves a copy of the mp3 onto my hard drive at the same time so i don't have to do anything which is really nice but it totally is about systems you have to systematize it okay note that's sexy self. yeah <laughs> that was you know sure what? i reduce my fees each month he's no, not i just i just a want, robot doing it all so. i just want you to know <laughs> as soon as strickland started talking all i was hearing was wah, 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 wah. <laughs> 
Yeah, sometimes it gets really it gets really complicated. So it is a matter of knowing what your strengths are, finding finding people that can do the stuff that you don't know how to do. Um, is it's not something that you have to do on your own in the beginning. I would suggest. I mean, I think the thing that Strickland and I probably did really well because we're cheap SOBs <laughs> is that we we did it all ourselves in the beginning. You know, before we started to piecemeal out and 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 bring in an executive producer and a produ- and, a, and a show producer for the show. Thank you, Mar and Anna, for being <laughs> playing those roles in our lives because they're amazing. Uh, we uh, we did everything ourselves. We did social media push. We did all the production. We did the interviewing. We got did the guest management. This was before Nicole even introduced me to Wacuity, and I think we were stringing up the uh, tin can with the with the uh, with the fishing line in between to to uh, to do the to do the the interviews themselves. It's just you, you've got to have some system. But I would say that at the beginning to do it on your own, just so you're understanding what. Um, uh, what it's all about. Well, can I, if I can in? chime in on yeah. that, Doug, real yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. You know, I see these shows like Serial. Obviously, Serial, you know, made podcasting huge again. But it's like you look at the producer and the executive producer, and the, I mean, like they've got this team, right? You don't have to have a team, really. Even though it seems kind of complicated, you totally can do all this yourself starting out. And there are lots of people out there that will help you, help you get started, help train you. But you don't have to have 15 people to get a podcast going. Nicole, what, what do you guys do? Out, Lou, obviously we do the production for you, but outside of that, what do you, what other help do you all have? Well, there, you, go, you go first. There's, okay. There's uh, there's not much, but I just want to chime in. I mean, like I really, it's pretty much me, <laughs> um, but I do want to just mention on what Doug just said, you know, and it goes back to that networking. It goes back to being a nice guy. When you are a good human being and you lead with relationship, you lead with value and you're not leading with like what's in it for me, people want to help you. So once Doug and I connected, um, it took a minute or two for me to actually be bold enough to say to him like, Hey, um, I see what you're doing here. Would you like some advice about yeah, how this could yeah. be easier. And at first Doug was like, Nope, we got it. We got our thing. It's all good. <laughs> That's me. And, it sounds yeah, like me. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> I love you so much. And, but then finally, like, I think it was after you saw what I was doing where you were my guest and you're like, Oh wait, okay. Maybe, you know, something, you know, okay, well we can talk. And it was just, I just liked you. I just wanted to volunteer to help you make things easier. And so I gave you some feedback and then you started, you guys went ahead and decided, is this right for us? You started implementing and then like you built your own system, right? And so I think that's really important for people who are thinking about getting into podcasting. A lot of people are going to try and sell you all the bells and whistles. And, And I mean, I'm in the business, Doug and Strick, you guys are in the business. I don't know the other two so well, but you know, there are, we're doing business, but at the same time, if you find the right people and you lead with value, you don't look for how can I take, take, take from people and you look at how you can serve them, people will want to serve you and they'll just make your journey so much easier. Oh, completely, yeah. completely agree. Completely. I, I was going to add to to an important point, point about deciding what's best for you or for your system. And, and I had the good fortune of being a guest on many shows before I created my own show. And I saw how certain podcast hosts did things, the way they asked questions, the, the way that they prepped me for an interview, uh, set up something. Uh, the, actually, the first time I ever came across Acuity might have been with, with Doug. And I said, I picked and choose the best of the things that fit for me. And that's the best part. You know, we've, you've been hearing all these options listeners on, on everything out there that you can choose. Every, you know, there's different price points, there's free things. What you need to do is figure out what makes the most sense for you and, and see the different things out there. And to Nicole's point, you know, ask the people in the community, and I will say this, the, the, the podcasting host for the most part, you know, aside, aside from Doug, are, are genuinely <laughs> really good people. And they'll really actually come and help you out and, and give you suggestions on things that have worked and learn from their mistakes and learn how to uh, expedite uh, your show so that you can make it better. And you know, my best advice said- with, with that podcasting and in life, never be afraid to learn. I mean, Nicole, I, it, what you have helped us out with, yeah. the, like, you know, it's so funny that you mentioned that. Like Doug was like, oh, no, I got this. You don't know what you don't know until you get into it. And I think Doug and I got into it. And then he interviewed you 
And he started to realize what the two of us didn't know. Oh my gosh, and yes. we just yeah. learned so much from you because you were willing to help and you were willing to share and tell us what you did and how you did things. And not everything that you do is good for us, but Lou just hit it right on the head. It's like some things are going to be really good for you. Other things won't work, but you got to listen to all of it and figure out what works for you. It's so important. Well, and thanks. Sorry, I just want to say one more thing. Thank yeah, you, for love guys. And so, like, not necessary. I do. I feel it. I appreciate it. But what Lou said about guesting, I mean, that's what I teach people, and I think that is the best way. When a podcaster themselves can go out on other shows, you get to learn so much about what works, what they're doing. That you're like, ooh, I like that, and what other people are doing, you're like, oh, I don't like that. Cause maybe you're doing something and you don't realize how it feels when you're on the other side of the mic. So I am a huge advocate of guesting. I also want to say one more thing. When you do find those things you like, please use it as inspiration and make it your own. I recently had, uh, I booked some clients on a podcaster's show who had been on my show. And when they were sending, like they're, they're, they, literally copied and pasted my words. All of their emails are my words. Their form is my, I'm like, it is really hard to see that and it doesn't feel good. And I even mentioned something like, you know, not in a confrontational way, but I said something like, Oh, um, I like your, your, uh, Q&A uh, or whatever. Or, yeah, like, oh, that's a, this looks really familiar, you know, wink, wink. And they said, yeah, well, I really liked your system. And so I gave it to my admin. I hope you feel flattered. And I'm like, and it still bothers me, to be honest. So I love inspiring people. I will be, you know, I'll give people all I can. But you have to recognize when you're being gifted with um, whether it's because you're experiencing something and you feel inspired or whether somebody's directly supporting you, please use that as inspiration to make it your own and don't just steal stuff from people. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, There's an expression, you know, imitation is the highest form of flattery. Um, I've actually done some things and changed the way my show is from things that I've seen, some from the nice guys, some from all the shows that are out there that have worked. However, copycatting is just not authentic. And, and what makes all of the shows and makes all of the great podcast shows great is the genuineness of the host and the uniqueness of your show. So think of that for every brand touch point that you have with that. To Nicole's point, if it's the, the question or, the, or the, the introduction acuity email that you send out, if it's uh, your opening, heck, if it's your music that you copy, whatever it might be, you got to recognize and understand that picking and learning from the best is a great idea, but you have to cut the best. I want to spend <laughs> just a moment talking about um, show hosting for a second because we, we touched on it. And we mentioned this word Libsyn, and, and I know there are others that are out there. And then if there's any subjects that you guys that, I, that I'm missing, and maybe there's some blatant things that I'm just not even thinking about. But um, Strick, since you do a lot in the world of, uh, of having to put this thing up uh, on, a, on the host, can you just share the couple of different things, options that, that we, we know of that you could possibly use? Well, one of the advantages of hosting, when you got something like Libsyn, and I'm sure Blurberry and all the rest are very similar, is that you can post ahead of time. So for example, our shows go up at 3 a.m. every every day, five days a week. Um, but let's say you post every Sunday at 3 a.m. or every Thursday at 3 a.m. or whatever it may be. You can post that days ahead of time if you like. So it's not like you have to be up at 3 a.m. to post it. Um, consistency is incredibly important. If you are having a post, uh, excuse me, having a podcast, people are looking for a new episode on the same day, on the same time, whatever it may be, whatever your publishing schedule is. But you can post it and set it to schedule ahead of time. So get ahead of the game whenever you can. You know, post it a week, two weeks, three weeks. Get three or four episodes posted ahead of time if you possibly can. But it is all about consistency. And and talk about the different hosts that are out there because we we use Libsyn right now, but we're just about to make a, 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 a kind of a, a a little scary move for me. Yeah, don't but. tell Rob at Libsyn that we may be <laughs> moving on to podcast websites. I'm curious what everybody else uses. We use Libsyn. Um, Lou, obviously, you lose you use Libsyn as well because you no, know, I don't post for you. You post yours, but I think you use Libsyn. Yeah. Um, Nicole and Caroline, what do you guys use? Oh, we're using Libsyn as well. 
I started with awe sound. I love Mark Moriarty and I love, you know, entrepreneurs that hustle. And so I really wanted to support him when he started. And awe sound is a great uh, starter platform too. They have a free plan, I believe still. Uh, but I did wind up moving over to Libsyn just because of all the bells and whistles. And I'm interesting to, I'm interested to hear why you guys uh, decided to move over. Cause I was looking at podcast websites for some reasons I was comparing it. I'm like, I don't know that I would actually move my hosting over to podcast website. So what made you guys uh, decide to do that? Strick, why don't you chime in? Because that's the, the technical side. I have my reasons, but what do you think? So we got a couple of things. Libsyn is, I, I think everybody considers Libsyn like the, you know, the, the, the blue ribbon. Basically, they are the guys. They are incredibly reliable. They are, the quality is right there. But for us, we post five days a week. So we're on the $75, $80 a month plan. So we're paying a significant amount of money because we post so much. Um, and podcast websites has a hosting plan that is unlimited. So it doesn't matter how much you host. It's one price. And not only do they also include um, website hosting, which we've had issues with. We have a WordPress site, but we're not website guys. And we have not been able to find a good podcast player that will automatically post. Again, if you post one day a week, it's not that big a deal for you to manually go on your web, on your um, WordPress site or on your Squarespace site and manually update it. When we're doing five days a week, it's a pain in the butt. We don't want to manually do that five days a week. So one of the things that podcast websites offers is it's all linked in together. It will be automatically posted the way we want. And the whole package with hosting, full website, everything is going to be under $100 a month. So basically we're getting website hosting plus the podcast hosting um, for not much more than we're paying Libsyn. And the second thing is, uh, and you know, they have a reputation and that's important because your RSS feed, that's your life, right? Mm -hmm. I've heard stories about certain other hosting companies that are like, eh, they're not so reliable, right? Well, if you have listeners who are trying to download your episode every week or a couple times a week or whatever it may be, and your RSS feed goes down, they're going to leave or they're going to move somewhere else. And it's much harder to get them back than it is to find them. And, and you want to find them, you want to get them, you want to hold on to them. So it's really important. But the fact that podcast website has a reputation, that means a lot to us too, but we haven't jumped in yet. So we're going to see how it goes. Well, I love that. And I'm actually considering going with them. I, I love Mark. I love uh, yeah. John Lee Dumas. I think they're great guys. And what they're doing is awesome. And if that if podcast websites was around when I was starting, I think 100% yeah. I would have jumped on board. So if you're just thinking of starting out, it's a great place to go. Um, because I didn't, it's a, a bit of a bigger decision and I am a bit of a geek and, and a web person. So I will say that if anybody out there is listening and thinking, wait, what? I have to actually post it manually. Um, my friend Hanny Mora actually has Simple Podcast Press, which is a plugin for WordPress and it's like nominal. It's really, there's not, it's not much of a cost at all. And so that actually automatically when you have an RSS feed that will post automatically to your WordPress site. Just FYI. Yeah, I think that the issue was that, and again, we don't have to get into the specifics on how it, how it actually posts, but I think we wanted a little bit more control over how it was posting in the way that it, the way that the player looked as well. The well other but we also, with us, we did something with WordPress and we had a guy design it for some reason, that specific player we looked into there was some overlay that this guy did that it didn't work with it and it hung up and we just don't yeah. know websites and we yeah. don't want to mess with that stuff. Right, right. I love that player from what I saw of it. We just and didn't get to work right. I think, and I could be wrong here, so don't throw darts, but I'm pretty sure that um, Hanny has worked with the guys actually. So you'll, you'll still be getting his software. <laughs> Excellent. I love well, it. What's, what's really nice about, and, and I think you, you mentioned um, names also, uh, um, Nicole, uh, John Lee Dumas and Mark Asquith are involved in it. And these are guys that their reputation is in the podcasting space and in the consulting space. And these are guys that are making their living at podcasting. And I don't feel like they would, I don't think that they're, they're you know, I know that they're not fly by night guys and I feel comfortable with them. Are they, are they Libsyn? Probably not yet. Can they be Libsyn? I think what's beautiful about what they're doing is they, they could take a company or I'm sorry, a podcast that is brand new and they could build not only the, 
the um, the, the player for the and the, and all of the analytics and all of the backbone of the show. But they all they surround it really nicely with a brand new website that if the person that also has a book that they're promoting or they have a blog, you can post that all on the site as well. It makes it a really neat all in one package. And they solved the problem that they had when they started, which is what I love so much when business owners or you know businesses pop up that they recognize, okay, this is really difficult for me. So how can I make it not difficult for the next guy? And so I, I think it's awesome. Excellent. Well, final words of advice. Let's, uh, let's go around the horn here, starting with you, Caroline, if we could. Is there anything that we missed uh, from an equipment, a software perspective, anything that we should have mentioned that we didn't talk about? Uh, I feel like you guys covered it other than um, I'm just using Logic Pro and that's what our, um, we also outsource our editing to our favorite audio producer, Ray Bueno. Um, He does all of that work for us and I know that he does it primarily through Logic and for those of you who are just starting out, honestly, GarageBand, it works. Like you can do what you need to do through GarageBand when you're just getting started. And I also think Libsyn or this other service is a good place to start as well. Excellent. Excellent. Strickland, how about you? Anything that we missed? Audio editing, if you are on a Mac, I'm sorry if you're on a Mac. No, I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) If you're on a Mac, GarageBand absolutely is great. If you're on a PC, Audacity, although you can get Audacity on on a Mac as well. I used Audacity for two and a half years before I made the investment in Hindenburg. I know a lot of people that use Adobe. It seems far more complicated than it needs to be for the price. I think GarageBand or Audacity is a great way to start, and it costs nothing. They are both free programs. It's a great way to dive in. All right. How about you, Lou? Final words? I think one thing that we did forget to uh, talk about, and and there's all these methods uh, to record and the microphones and whatnot, I cannot speak more importantly from the heart of how important it is to have a backup recorder. <laughs> and <laughs> and specifically, if you interview somebody you know, famous like a, a former comedian or some famous broadcaster where you're going out to meet them, just uh, there are many different options out there um, and some of them might not be uh, the most inexpensive. I actually use a Tascam uh, recorder for backup and it's actually recording right now. And, <laughs> and, he, and here's the, the thing that, that's really important and that is that you just need it as an emergency because you'll need that emergency every now and then. Uh, but the last, the other part about the rest of this whole experience, don't be overwhelmed by it. Be excited. This is fun stuff. This is you are communicating and getting your voice out there. You've got a story, an interview, a program, whatever it might be. And as you're putting all this stuff together and all these technical issues might feel overwhelming, it's really not. It's really fun. Take it with that attitude, not be I'm going to be overwhelmed with this. I don't know what to do. Enjoy it. Have fun and have a backup recorder. Awesome. Awesome. How about uh, Nicole? How about you? Any final comments? Final comments. I agree with Lou. You know, enjoy the ride, have fun and um, just allow yourself to play. The great thing about the podcasting space is that it's really like the wild, wild west still. So you can do things your own way. Nobody, nobody is going to tell you, you must do it this way. You must do it that way. And if they are, they're probably not people you need to listen to. So have fun, get messy, get bold and uh, do you. Excellent. Excellent. And, and I just want to throw in one, one additional comment that, that Nicole just emphasized what you had said. The people in this, in this environment, in this space in podcasting are amazing. Uh, listen, watch, learn from the people that have gone before you. Uh, we were in, in, involved in podcasting for over two years before we even went to, I believe, our first conference or maybe a little, a little bit less than two years before we went to a DC PodFest. And then we went to Podcast Movement out in Anaheim. And I'll tell you, when you start to get confirmation that what you're doing is right and you're in a good spot, man, that makes that that motivates you even when you're when you're not making uh, money at podcasting. And there are various reasons why people get into podcasting, whether you want to share your message or whether you're trying to make money or whether you just want to leave a legacy behind. There are so many different ways and reasons people get into podcasting. Whatever it is, there are people that are doing it before you. Follow them, watch them, observe them, ask them for help. I'll tell you something. That's the best thing when we get people to come and ask us for help. We feel we feel like uh, like kings in in the trade. Um, now that we're in a position where we actually um, are getting paid to, to start and go from from concept to launch, it's it makes it even better. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're getting paid for this? Yeah, sorry, Strick. I meant to tell you that. <laughs> I meant to tell you that. I did. I guess I got to share that with you again. So uh, thank you, thank you, everybody. Caroline, Strickland, Lou, Nicole. 
Uh, thank you for being a part of the uh, the second podcast, Podcasters Forum, or pod, what, what the hell we call this? Is it Podcasters Forum? That sounds like that's right, isn't it? That's what you called it. I guess that's what we can keep it with. Whatever. <laughs> that's right. you know? So we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have more episodes, more stuff coming, and uh, and thank you everybody for all the information um, that we covered. We're gonna do our best to put everything into show notes, but if it's not there, feel free to to reach out to any of us that were on the show today. We'll put our contact information. And ask us what we're doing and how we can help you. We are uh, we are we are in love with this opportunity here in podcasting. And thank you everybody for being a part of the uh, a part of the show today. No mm-hmm. problem. And I'm sure yeah, it'll be tweeted you. 60 million times. Before the end. <laughs> yeah, this will be this will be promoted. I, do I have to say Steve O'Brien take us out of here, or should it be something else, Drake? No, I no. no I think this is going to be. We're going to have a lot of different publications of this. So for us. We can say Steve O'Brien take us out of here, but Why for don't others, we do all our sign-offs. Why doesn't everybody sign off the way? Everybody I love that, Lou. Lou, give us your sign-off. Sign off. All right, everybody, be brief, be bright, be gone. Nicole. Until next time, this is Nicole Holland signing off. Caroline. I'm Caroline Tassone, and this was Shareable. For the nice guys on business, I'm Steve O'Brien. They have listeners in other countries. I didn't think anyone was listening outside of their house. Except maybe their moms. I love it. That's so cool. Everybody <laughs> sign off. Oh, that's so sweet. It's like a big warm hug. <laughs> All right, get out of here. Thanks.